Now that you have been introduced to the while loop functionality, I'd like to introduce you to some important commands that we can utilize when we are working with loop-like structures. Yeah, these are going to come in handy for the other methods of iterations that we are going to be discussing. So let's take a look at the pass, the break, and the continue commands in action. For the first one, the pass command, I'm going to just demonstrate this for you live here, right inside of one of our files. This is just a fun little way we can put in a placeholder. Yeah, think about it. If I am creating some type of while statement in my program, maybe I want to go ahead and just have a simple placeholder. So I'm saying, that the condition is going to test to false, which will break out of the while loop we know, but we have to put something in there. So we can put in there this statement of pass. And now let me print something just to make sure this is totally working. So I'll say success as what I'm printing. So notice, it's going to evaluate the while. It's going to see that it is false, so it needs to stop doing the iterations. And what are we actually doing inside it? We're doing nothing. So if we get the success word printed, we'll know that this is the correct usage of the little pass placeholder. So let's go ahead and save this thing and run it. And look at that, it works perfectly. So, if you are constructing a program and you want to just have a placeholder inside one of your statements like this, it's no problem. We can just say pass, and obviously what's going to happen later on is we're going to come and add the appropriate criteria here, and we're going to input the correct instructions that will take place during that while loop. So, pass, if you see it, you'll know exactly what is up with that statement. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at both break and continue and see what they can do for us in Python. I've got an example here for us to look at of break in action, and here it is. So, here's a look at break. Notice what we do first is we just initialize a counter. So I have a variable called num and I set it equal to one. What we're then going to do is loop until we have a number greater than 11. So I'm going to say while our number is less than or equal to 10, do some things. And notice what we're going to do. We're going to check if the number is equal to five. And if it is, we're going to break. What does this do? It exits the loop immediately. Notice what else we're going to do. Then if it is not five, we're going to go ahead and print the number and then increment the number. And notice this is the first use of that kind of shorthand for incrementing a number. Yeah, we're saying, all right, take that number and add one to that number, and that will be the new value of our variable called num. And then we're going to print the loop stopped early due to break. So what do we expect to see here? We expect to see the number one printed, the number two printed, three printed, four printed, but I think we won't see the number five printed, and I think we'll see that the loop stopped early due to a break. Let's check it out. We're going to go ahead and run our module, and look at that. It works perfectly. So it iterates through, prints one, prints two, prints three, prints four, but then we know there's a break instruction if the number equals five, and we can see break working perfectly. All right, well, guess what? There's also the ability to continue with the continue command. So let's take a look at this example. Same thing, we initialize our counter. Same thing, we're going to loop until the number is greater than 10, but this time we're going to check to see if the number is odd. 
If the number is odd, we're going to implement it. Uh, we're going to increment it, excuse me. So we're going to add to that number. And then notice what we're going to do. We're going to continue, which means it goes right back to the start of the instructions. So it's going to iterate um, this again, right? This time it's, of course, the, the number has been added uh, or incremented with one. Yeah, so pretty cool. And notice there is outside of this if logic, we have printing the number. Sure, we're going to print the number and increment the number as well. Notice this is going to run until we hit the number equaling 11, at which point it will print finished. So what's going to happen here? We should see the even numbers printed between 1 and 10. Let's run the module and look at that. 2, 4, 6, 8. Who do we appreciate? And then it does do the number 10 and then it is finished. So notice we have powerful commands we can use, break and continue, inside things like loops to, and, you know, to finally control what is happening with our iteration. We also saw, don't forget, in this video, we saw the pass statement, which is just an easy way to put some kind of placeholder in where you will have additional commands later on. I'm so glad that we saw these special keywords that we can use in Python because these will be coming up oftentimes in your programs and you want to be able to interpret them just fine. Well, thanks so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in our next video where we're going to look at a different way to iterate through cases in our Python logic.